right in the middle of downtown Seattle, just a few blocks away from the start of the Puget Sound. And the streets are super steep, there's tall buildings, and there's almost nowhere to harvest and infiltrate rainwater. Yet here we are, just up from a huge water body that connects with the ocean. So, in this hyper-dense and uh, very developed and kind of schmancy place here, we can see this artistic and interesting example of water harvesting. We have the beckoning cistern. The cistern, which is off kilter, beckoning in the rainwater through the downspout entering into the fingers. So the water is coming into the cistern, which is not a storage cistern for irrigation. It's basically a surge tank, slowing the water. So in a big downpour, instead of the water just racing down these streets directly in the Puget Sound, it's coming into the cistern. And then as you can see, soaking into this area and then overflowing through these small ponds, this nice little forested area, uh, each one collecting and infiltrating the water down. Now from here, the water then comes down and flows onto this very steep street and we'll see what's down below in this system. We also have this dynamic sculptural downspout that has these multi-prongs and these plants. So the water is actually being slowed during its traverse down the side of the building before it even hits the uh, drainage into the street here. So this is just a really cool and I would call it whimsical, actually, it's a very whimsical example of how a hyper-dense urban area can infiltrate and slow the flow of water to clean it and soak it into the ground and support vegetation, support a microclimate on its way into the Puget Sound below. So this is sculptural, this is fun, this is whimsy. However, imagine that systems like this in very highly developed urban areas like this were replicated throughout the city. I mean, take this small patch and take the small footprint of this building here and the amount of area that's being harvested to the system and multiply that on every street and every building and suddenly we have widespread impacts both on the natural environment of the uh, vegetation that can benefit from this and also the hydrology, the subsurface water table that can be built up by water that is soaked into the ground instead of quickly shunted downhill as fast as possible. So here we are at the second stage of the system. We're just a block down from the beckoning cistern up on the other side of the street there. And you can see here, they've created this little artificial creek bed running down between the road and this building here. Uh, each little terrace has a baffle where the water will overflow one to the next with these large river rocks. You can see how the water comes off the roof through this artistic downspout and then is channeled into this artificial stepped terraced creek bed. So. Stage two, let's take a look now at stage three. And here we are at the bottom of the third block of this water harvesting system. Here we have these wide terraces filled with wild rose here in the series of steps, stepping the water, cascading down, soaking one terrace to the next, pouring down when it's raining, through these artistic downspouts and making somewhat of a show and a display of the water. And then just one more block down, we've got the Puget Sound. So for three blocks, we're taking the water from the roadways, we're taking the water from the adjacent buildings, and we're soaking it in to these planted areas, slowing it down in these vegetated water harvesting structures, and actually benefiting the ecology benefiting the hydrology and ultimately benefiting the water quality in the Puget Sound. Really great example of how you integrate water harvesting in the hyper dense urban area, high traffic pedestrian flows and 
uh, use a lot of artfulness, creativity, whimsy, and functionality in the process.